Hey guys, it's happening. Episode two, it is going down. I have a special guest today. Um, he's right here, a local. Some of you guys might know him. Some of you have may have seen his face. You may just be like, that guy's familiar and I don't know why. Well, maybe we can remind you. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the one and only Mr. Michael Scheid. You said you said my name perfectly. Okay, <laughs> I actually should have probably asked you that. There before. was bound to be a first, you know. We didn't actually plan anything. We didn't say what we were going to talk about. Um, I was just like, you know, what? let's just let's go with this. Um, I was telling someone that you might be like my Kanye West guest, <laughs> and I don't mean that like a bad thing. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, not not whatsoever. I have my entire adult life, I have been known as the guy that could say anything. So that, that could derail any conversation that, you know, he might say something brilliant, he might get you canceled. You know, that's kind of the... <laughs> it's only episode the, two. We I, I, uh, I bring a sort of, I don't know what's going to happen energy to the table. Yeah, well, be sure. T- so I'm going to tell everyone who who you are to me, but then you can tell people who you really are. Um, so I, I know you now for a couple of years. I think I met you through Brian, who is the pastor at the First Church of God. If, am I right on that? Because you have a way better memory than I do. And I know that because of how I met you, which is quiz night. And I yes. don't think I helped at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah no, that, uh, that, that sounds right. There is a church north of town, uh, a yeah. little bit more um, artistically driven. Yeah. Little, um, a little bit more of the, little bit more of the show, a little bit more of a. They have the, to, a worship band. I don't think a lot yeah. of the churches around here. Have uh, that. Ex- exactly so, yeah. you know. And one of the things that we might get into in the next forty-five minutes or so is that I'm not really about that uh, uh, worship. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm very much about worship. Uh, I'm about feeding sheep and not entertaining goats. All right. So and so there's a broad road. Yes, <laughs> <Kanye. is> exactly. <laughs> no, so, no, I'm I'm down so for here this. Comes, so uh, so here comes Kanye. You know, and the so um, I'm all about having a good band. I'm all about having good music. But if we get distracted by the show, we fail to appreciate that the gospel has everything we need. The Bible is sufficient. That has to be our anchor. We have to dive deeply into the Word of God. And if we're putting on something that is appealing to the masses, I actually think there's some there's some danger in that. Oh, Because yeah. if, 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 if there's broad road appeal, we have to ask ourselves, why are we appealing to the broad road heading to destruction? Well, I, I mean, I, I definitely think I can agree with some of, of what you're saying. And maybe it's just context or whatever we we could go into that but before we go into that because i do want to get back to that i just want to do a little more of an introduction in the sense of um maybe getting your your testimony like because i i know i know you but i don't really know your testimony i know that you are you can you are like jeopardy in your head like you can pull out weird random facts like what this year of of the truck when it was made in this year because it had this size tire and you're like oh yeah that's the blah 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 i swear you guys think i'm exaggerating i'm not like there might there might be you might be you might be like a little brilliant on some of that is that what you've been told <laughs> or is that well you know so i i i really feel as if a great deal of my life is I'm kind of like a dog chasing a car, and then I catch the car, and I don't know what to do with it. Well, try you not know, to die. So, so God has made me unusually perceptive, okay. and that's all glory to him. It's none, none to me. You know, I can't say, oh, I take credit for so this So where gift. did that start? Where Where is your come to God moment? What Was this like raised in a Christian family? I've just always known him, uh, or is there like... You know, no, you know, I, I really, I really come from a legacy of the brain trust of disbelief. All right, you know, okay. I, I was raised highly educated and in a nominally Christian environment where pretty much the message Agnostic was, kind no, 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 no. I, I was raised in a church, Oh, okay. but I would rather my children not go to church than go to a church like that. Pretty much for them, the gospel was don't hate anybody, which is good advice, but it won't save you. Uh, pretty much care for the poor. Again, good advice, but it won't save you. It was a very works-driven social gospel message. Moralistic. Exactly so. Of, Ex- yeah. Exactly so. It was extraordinarily moralistic. And uh, I became convinced at the age of 17 that I was a sinner. Uh, 
okay. and that that sin did separate me from a holy God, and that faith in Jesus Christ was necessary to bridge that gap. Holy God, sinful Mike, someone had to connect the two. And I never got that growing up. And so actually, I became quite embittered to the church of my youth because they treated sin as if something like, yeah, we all blow it. Yeah, but there's a consequence for blowing it. Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 8.28 uh, is, uh, speaks of how everything works together for a purpose. Well, if you have a holy God, a human being that falls short, you need someone to bridge that gap. And most Americans think that you can bridge that gap yourself. That's moralism, right? That's if I only try harder. If I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't chew, I don't go with girls that do. I'm going go to I'm, I'm gonna go bridge that gap. Or I'm going to give more to the poor or more for the environment. Or I'm going to fight for women's rights or whatever. It's a moralistic soteriology. We're saying that somehow if we just thought better, acted better, if we were to be better, we would have um, a reconciliation with the Holy God. However, only Jesus Christ can reconcile us to a holy God. Someone had to fulfill the law that we could not fill. Someone had to live the perfect life that we could not live. And until I was 17, I was never hit with that. And what, I, and what did it for me was I first became aware that I was a sinner and that it was a problem. I think the average person will tell you that they're a sinner. <clears throat> what they don't do, forgive me, it, what they don't realize is, is that sin has eternal consequences. The wages of sin is death. Ezekiel, the soul that sins will die. And so that's the part that once I figured out, well, I have a problem, well, I need to look for a solution. Are you, are, are, when you're 17, are you here? Are you, is this your, is this where you were at 17? No, I was, uh, I was in the western suburbs of Chicago. Gotcha. I was in the small little suburb of Chicago. Yeah. And I, I kind of felt kind of a pull that the way I was thinking and living wasn't quite right. And I was in a AMC Gremlin in a flood. Okay. I was driving in a flood. I, I was riding in a flood. I wasn't driving. And we pull up to an intersection and there's this uh, firefighter and we're like, can we go, can we go forward? And the guy says, yeah, sure. So about a block and a half, two blocks toward the viaduct, this AMC Gremlin is now a, one of those duck boats at the, uh, at the Wisconsin Dells. We're submerged in water. The water is coming up to the, up to the windows. And I don't know how my friend gets out of that flood, but somehow we get out of this and it was really, it was, it was, it was, uh, I don't know what the word is. It's like sublime to have like water where like you're looking out and you're thinking you're seeing the, the houses next to you and you're seeing water instead. Mm -hmm. Somehow we get out of that water and we get out to the intersection where the, the firefighter was and said, yeah, go ahead. And there's this guy looking to get jumped. He's got like a, a jump started. Like he's got like the, yeah. uh, the I'm chords, sorry. the chord. Well, exactly. So, I mean, I, I, I put envelopes in boxes. I don't know. Uh, I don't know chords for nothing. But you know, yeah. so <laughs> I'm not your guy. So, like, so, like, so he's I'm holding up. Guy, and like, I want to be jumped, man. and I'm like, well, this isn't going to go well. And so, like, they're uh, they're 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 putting the 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 stuff up to the terminals, and I and like there's sparks flying and everything. It's like we should we how do we even get out of this uh, deluge? Let alone to be trying to jumpstart this car. And again, it's a 75, 76 AMC Gremlin. This is not really a car that is probably packing a lot of heat. And I don't know what it was that brought about it in me, but I prayed seriously for the first time in my life. Lord, if, you're really, if you really care about what I'm about, if you really care what I'm doing, if you really care that I've been interested in the occult and stuff like this, start that car right now. I said the word now, Joe, and that car started. And I don't mean it was not it was not a it was not a now one two three four now. Yeah. <laughs> it starts. Now, then we go up a block over and over and and then we've crossed another viaduct where we're going on dry ground, on D R Y ground. And I said, "Lord, I asked you to show yourself to me. I can't I can't not I I accept this." Mhm. Mm and so at that moment, Faith. I realized that there was a personal God who reveals himself to man. Mm -hmm. And if that's true, then I'm answerable to that God. Mm -hmm. 
and I became convinced that he revealed himself to us in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, um, I was not yet Orthodox in my Christianity, but I knew that the Bible could be trusted, which mm -hmm. then led me to Orthodoxy in my Christianity. Interesting. What so, made you know that you could trust the Bible, though? Because you said you were dabbling in a cult. It was a it was, it was a supernatural revelation. Just kind of, you're yep. like, that's, yep. that's, it, it, that's it, it. it. Well, you know, and I'll tell you, like, that's the Calvinist in me. You know, <laughs> I mean, it, well, I mean, really, like, it was given to me. I didn't figure it out. It wasn't that I was. So, like, I'm a London Baptist Confession 1689 guy. But that was given to me. I didn't choose that. I didn't, like, think through. Now, I can now. Like, after the fact, I'm very comfortable as a Christian saying that Christianity is very philosophically complete. You know, why would an all-powerful, all-good God allow evil? And my answer is because he took on flesh and lived through it himself. He is uniquely capable of answering the problem of theodicy. I could answer that now, but I couldn't do that at 17. Right, you did it. You, so, you know, in the beginning of your come to God moment where you're really putting faith in him, it's not about what you know. It's more about you're experiencing him. That's You're literally doing the relationship part at the very beginning part of it. You were like, nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. I, what, what, I, what I really would encourage people to realize is Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For it is by grace that you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. That means not of your cleverness. That, ne that means not of your schooling. That means not of your logic. <laughs> For it is by grace you've been saved through faith. Yes, it's faith, but even the faith is grace. Grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. By grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift, not wages, wages you earn. The wages of sin is death. You and I have earned death, eternal destruction. Yeah. That's what we've earned. But God gives us grace. So, I mean, now, so you're 17, you're coming to God, you realize... Uh, you said like you're kind of having these bad experiences with church where you're, it's kind of this moralistic um, kind of the rise of the hill song. Well, actually, no, you're even before that because you're, you're I'm not trying to call you out on your age, but I'm an old yeah, man. Look at me. Like, yeah. the, the people can see me. They know, they, they know what's going on. They know they, they know what time it is in like uh, in male man. You might have so a like. gray. You might have a gray hair. Um, but so you're you're realizing churches are do you, do you feel like the problem is do you believe one do you believe that they're sincere in their efforts like when they're when it seems to be this you know be slow to anger um be quick to listen this like giving them instructions the to-do list of this is how you are a better person rather than you're saying the gospel right because you're like the gospel is sufficient uh, that's all a church really needs. Um, and of course, you can get into like all the semantics of all of that. What I'm saying is you're, you're kind of I don't know how long it takes from 17 through going through these church periods of like realization, maybe a little church hurt, kind of experiencing it, having to figure it out, gaining discernment because you have to experience it. So what at what point do you um I guess go from your faith into because I know only you coming into public service is recent. I know it's only been a year now, right? About a year. Correct. Um, because I don't even know if I said in the introduction of this, it just it just went going, it just zipped right off. Uh, that's but, what we're doing, baby. <laughs> and there's not, I didn't even have caffeine. Uh, it's not my fault if it zipped. I'm pretty sure it was your fault, but usually probably my fault. But you're the you're the commissioner of Mar Sales. Um. Am, am I saying it? How would you introduce that? Like, how? Would yeah. You say no. It? So my, my technical office is on the streets commissioner for the city of Marseilles. Yeah. But you were elected. Uh, it's an at-large election. Yeah. Everybody runs on one ticket. The top four get in, and then the mayor assigns to you what you're going to be in charge of. Gotcha. And so there's finance, there's public property, there's uh, public health and safety, and then there's streets. And I get the sense that generally the streets is the, the, uh, how to say this. Um, the one that doesn't look like mom, you know, I, I feel that, uh, I, I feel that the one that's least prized amongst the geldings, uh, is probably the one that ends up with the streets commissioner. So, uh, so is yeah. It, so is it like the dirty job or the, well, you know, it's, it, it, it's fascinating and this is a little inside baseball, but you know, when, when you run for, when you run for small town office, you're, it's a part-time gig, you know, you're 400 yeah. bucks a month or so, you know? And it's 
it's kind of a vanity, hey, look at me, hey, am I popular, can I appeal to the masses? But it's not, what do I actually know about this particular content area? So public health and safety, nobody was running on, you know what, I know police work, I know how uh, state law applies, criminal law applies law applies, what problems local police are having in this town versus this, the cities versus rural versus small town. You know, me as a streets commissioner, I didn't run on, well, I know what engineering looks like, about core samples, about what things should cost, about the IDOT renewal or review process, none of that. So there's sort of a disconnect between the skill set and the job you end up having. Mm -hmm. And Uh, Whereas perhaps I can get elected to the U.S. Congress and have 10 staff members who can go learn that for me. I really don't have that as a small town commissioner. You know, I sort of have to learn everything on my own. And if in theory my job is to oversee the streets department, I don't necessarily want to get my information from the people who report to me. Because I want to know what that subject is so that I can adequately supervise them and then get information from them. Thank, thank God for social media, probably. You know, I, social media plays a, 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 a certain role. However, uh, there really is a ego versus competence dichotomy. You know, someone can be very charismatic, but not necessarily be, be very competent in what they're doing. And I believe very strongly I could be elected commissioner forever. I just have to come in the top four. But am I a good commissioner? Well, that means that I'm actually doing well by the fiduciary responsibility the people of this town have placed in me. Well, they're not necessarily going to see that. I'm going to have to show that to them. I'm going to have to be an educator. And if I'm going to educate them as to what these numbers mean and what they translate to and what your streets look like, then I have to know that myself. And I am by profession a letter carrier. I put envelopes in boxes. I don't pave roads. <laughs> you know, I'm not a civil engineer. I don't plan to pave roads. And so getting the, the necessary information, as well as being a political figure that has to appeal to people, it's a very delicate balance. And in all of that, wishing to glorify God with everything that I do. Because if this takes my focus off of the gospel, off of telling other people of the hope they could have in Jesus Christ, now I'm subordinating the less important to the most important. Okay, so that would lead me into like probably two questions. One, what led you to do this? Because what you just described is a lot of work, okay? So it's a lot of work. So what makes you say as a man of God, as a father, as a husband, um, you already have a job, um, go, one, I'm going to go into this public service as a Christian, which from my point of view does not seem easy one two how do you balance what you're describing as a man of god and having um sorry i have a cat (laughs) the the cat is not bothering me at all the cat is not bothering me at all hello cat if i if i put her in a another room she'll she'll meow so not at all not at all this is as good as we get the cat is uh like like uh what do you call this uh like uh uh, oh gosh what's the word it's uh like there's there, there's a term for it forgive me but it's like it's like a um natural it's like a, a natural effect oh my i leave the cat on there the cat the cat was meant to be the here, cat you know? is organic showing you that's how exactly this organic it's a very organic uh part of part of what we're doing but also but also making me forget totally what i was saying like, well you're talking that's... about like why bother well I mean, okay so what what made you do it and then there's that challenge of like you're 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 putting a nail. Okay, so the nail that sticks out gets hammered, right? Uh, in public office, I would say, is where you are going to have the most. I'm trying to like I don't know judgment. I I don't know coming from all from all ends from people that are saying, "Oh, you're a Christian. Shouldn't you behave like this?" Or like, or because you're a Christian, you fall into this, like without even getting to know you. It's just, okay, you got, well, actually, you're falling into stereotypes, you're falling into judgment, you're falling into um, all of it. It's it's kind of like a, it's a dangerous thing, I would say, to get it, because it's politics, you're describing politics. Like one of the things you were talking about was like competence versus charisma, and like some of them aren't, like to me, you described a politician. Um, but you're into, I don't mean to sound so bad, you are in politics, I'm kind of dogging it, that sounds terrible. Um, but 
and honestly, I probably should have been in politics according to my personality test, but good thing I didn't. Um, the idea is you're getting into this thing that that there can be conflicting ideas. And you're also representing a wide variety of people in the town of Marseilles because it's not all Christians, right? And so that's that throws into the concern of like, well, how's that going to affect? Now, I don't know how much street commissioner is going to affect somebody, but the idea is you're, you're putting yourself into that pathway of, like you said, I don't want to not have to give the gospel in order to do this uh, this job, this public service, where it is a service. You're a servant, you're a service. So you're getting into the blending, the blending of the two. So that's, and I think it's dangerous, or I think it's potentially risky. And I don't think that's unwise for me to even assume that, especially this day and age, just because there seems to be more of a, I don't want to sound conspiracy theorist, but I feel like there is definitely more of like a, um, a negative look on Christianity. It's been there for a while, but it just seems to be like escalating quickly. I don't know what your thoughts are, but that's the questions. Uh, okay, if, yeah, that, if that made sense. No, actually, actually it makes perfect sense. And I believe that I can, I can give a helpful response. You know, uh, Caleb, I think it's in Joshua. It's somewhere back there. Caleb's in his eighties and they're looking at a hill that they would like to take and like, yeah, should we take it? I don't know. I don't know. And Caleb asked, asked the Lord, Lord, I'm old, but I want that hill. And the Lord, I love this. The Lord says, you are very old. <laughs> yeah. go, go take that hill. Go take that hill. You know what? The, day, the hour is late. The culture is not happy with Christians. I wanted that hill. Mm-hmm. Joe, I wanted that hill. I wanted that hill. And I, asked, and I, I, I don't want to oversell it, but I believe that, th- that now is the time for Christians to take back territory that we lost i I want more christians in politics i want more christian doctors i I want more christian teachers and i want us not apologizing for being christians i'm taking jesus with us yeah with uh, with me and as far as the um and and i am an out christian as a politician yeah like i don't hide that for nothing right uh and i believe that christians have to stop pretending that you leave your faith at home no it comes with you I believe that the whole pietism, the whole there's a part of there's a there's a there's a place for faith and there's a place for not faith. That is the biggest failure of the American church is that we left it at home. Matthew twenty eight thirty, Jesus says, "All authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples." Who has authority? Who's in charge? Jesus Christ is. Not Caesar. Not Pritzker. Not Hollenbeck. Not Scheib. Not Biden. Not Trump. Just going through Jesus all Christ right. has all authority on heaven and on earth. And the idea that I would say, okay, Jesus, but not here, no. <laughs> like, bad, bad, bad Christian. That a Christian would say, I, I'm not going to take my faith here. I'm a Christian, but I'm not a nut about it. I'm a Christian, but I'm going to, like, be subdued. No. That's the problem. Do you realize, Joe, that 50 out of the 55 signers of the Declaration of Independence were Christians? We're open evangelical Christians. Mm-hmm. How did we go from ninety percent to where we're at now? Well, that's a that's a rabbit hole that would require more oh, time. Indeed. Well, <laughs> well, we're, well, well I, we're, we're going to get together soon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, but really, I I truly believe that the call is for Christians to be belligerent. I want that hill. Caleb's Caleb's in his eighties. I want that hill. Christian, go take that hill. Go run for office, go get a job, go get married, go start a business, have you some kids. Let's do this, baby. So what I'm what what you're describing is the dangerous Christianity I'm talking about. Because you can have a gummy bear Christianity and be in politics. You can just you can be exactly what you were describing with those churches earlier where it's like Jesus loves you. And that's it. Again, that seems God to be made an you ongoing. special, yeah. and He loves you very yeah, yeah. much. Sure, and 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 love yourself a lot. You know, yeah, all oh, of sure. that. Oh, you know, uh, just get into. <laughs> I think it's assumed we already do that. Yeah, that's right. Um, way so, ahead of you there. <laughs> so the the idea is uh, that's kind of what you might mostly see when Christianity hits a platform of politics, right? You're going to see that kind of again. I call it gummy bear Christianity, but. Maybe lukewarm. Maybe that's too harsh. I, call, I don't know. I, I call it the evangelical industrial complex. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's there's money to be made. <laughs> of course, you have a term. <laughs> yeah, like it's a uh, it's one of my terms. Uh, but I do I do see that being like the safer Christianity, right? And that's also the the churches that tend to be 
you know, focus on like draw them in, draw them in, and not really the disciple and education and um, and edification comes with iron sharpening iron. And I think that would be something that you would easily see lacking in one of those churches we're describing, right? Because you're saying, I believe in an iron sharpening iron Christianity. I believe in a... Um, Gosh, just, I feel like these words are so taboo. I feel like I've been like, you know, like politically correct makes you like talk a certain way. I feel like there's a Christian version of that too, of like oh, political correct. Ten thousand percent. Because I'm like scared to say certain words. Like I notice yes, that I'm like yes. dancing around it. You know, if you want me to say the wrong thing, I will. Don't, 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 don't <laughs> no, you worry. Don't I'm you usually worry. the one who says the wrong yes, thing. Yes. I'm over here trying to not be Kanye. Like I'm over 100%, here. hundred percent. Yeah. Because no, you know what? Be Kanye. Yeah. Be Kanye, baby. <laughs> no, I'm you just. Know, okay, so, okay. So I'll tell you what, Joe. If you look at. You know, the Apostle Paul says, these people that want to take you back to Jewish law, they want you to, they want to get circumcised. I say cut the whole thing off. Oh. He oh. was not, he was not <laughs> tiptoeing around political correctness. You know no, what? No. Like you want to be, no. you, and listen, you want to be holy, listen, you be extra holy. This is, yeah. this is my faith too. I have a, I, I describe it as a torch faith. Like I believe that there's a lot of candles out there. Thank God for them. They're warm. They're, they're welcoming. You know, they work and they do their job exactly how they're supposed to do. I do feel a little bit more like a torch, you know, and I do feel like uh, when it comes to my Christianity, I am for calling sin, sin, not because I'm out there judging. I'm guilty of sin, too. I need Jesus just as much as you need Jesus. But that doesn't give I don't let I don't let, you know, hypocrisy is an interesting thing because it's like when we talk about it, like we don't do it, that it becomes hypocrisy. I believe I believe when we recognize we do it and we still say, no, don't do that. It's not hypocrisy. It's saying I'm a failure. You're failing. I recognize that because I see it in myself. Like I recognize, you know, I, and so there's this version of Christianity that is a little bit more, I guess, the blazing one, the one that says, I do think uh, Christians should be involved in politics. I do think Christians should try to get positions and jobs and work and not and not be as timid with their faith as we see. You know, who, you know, who we see. um being brave with their faith, pretty much any other religion other than Christianity. <laughs> like, if you're anything else, but you know what? There's a whole system behind it that helps elevate that. And and I think that might be become, I think that maybe, do you think that that fear of what we're talking about, like being a torch, comes from the backlash? Because you know there is backlash. I know you've experienced it. You're just good at it. You're good at arguing. You're good at debate. Um, and so therefore, again, this might be a calling if you're a politician there, I mean, it is a calling. And if you definitely are saying, God, this is a calling. So even you being in, in, in this position, I believe would be a calling, but how do you, how do you like delegate? Like, well, I mean, the, the first thing you have to do is realize that failure is impossible. If you are set out for the glory of God, Hebrews says that the Lord is not unjust. He will not forget the good things that you do for yeah. him. So failure is impossible. Now, I might do something that doesn't seem to reach fruition. Yeah. You know, it may well be that in two years the voters say, hey, who's that idiot? You know, whatever. We don't want that. In which case, I just forego that $400 a month salary and mm -hmm. I go do something else. What? That's why fine. are you doing this, though? Like, what... Because I don't know, I, I sort of asked it, like, why why take on this work? Why? Because I know, I agree. I'm saying Christians should be in politics. Yes. Christians should be getting involved. So, but yeah, are you start. wanting to impact Christian things into? Like, do, do you say, because I'm a Christian, I also want to impact the community in a Christian way? Like, are you trying to align Christian values with what you're doing? Like, of course, giving, sacrificial, these are fruits. But I mean, like... Like, I'm not trying... I know you're not out there making policies on, on like, you know, Christian or non-Christian things, like schools or stuff. Like, that's the school board and all that. Like, but... Oh, okay. Okay. Let's do, like, the school board. That's a great example. Like, so... um, Do... Okay. So, like, for me right now, if I, if I could homeschool my kids, I would. If I could have... If I could make that happen, I would totally do it because... Or... Or private school. If I could do private school, Christian private school, I totally would do that with my daughter. If I could homeschool, I'd love that even more, right? Because then I can hang out. 
but that comes from me not wanting her. Well, I, I of course I want to be. Well, let me finish that statement. I do want her. Me not wanting her in public school. Sure. Um, I do, but I enjoyed public school. I I enjoyed it. But like the things that I hear that's going on that she tells me directly that that it's just not the same world anymore. Like even how we play outside, right? Like I could come home when the street lights, you know, they turn on. I was just like time to go home. Now it's like you're walking through a whole danger list with your kid and like you're like and if you see this if you see this like because it's just they're doing like red drills i remember when fallon was telling me uh her school was doing like shooter drills and she was young and she was terrified dude she was like i hate i hate red light day or whatever it was called so i'll 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 speak to that really quickly um i was there delivering mail one day when they were doing one of those drills Mm -hmm. and i was absolutely appalled because they were they were introducing trauma to children. She was highly terrified. unlikely to ever experience trauma. Like she did not want to go to school because yeah. she knew it was going to be that drill that day. She'd be like, oh, I don't want to go to school today. They're going to do this drill. It's so scary. Like it makes she was getting anxiety. And like, honestly, at the age that they're doing that, I, I understand that there's like some sort of wisdom. But I also know that kids experience things different from how we experience them as adults. To them, they can't. There's not like different. When they watch a movie, they're there doing it. Like when they're flying around the world, they're flying around the world. You know what I mean? They're experiencing it. They that they don't really separate those. And so like this stuff to me is like crazy, right? So we got what they're teaching in schools that I I I think is crazy. Um, how schools operate right now. And this is not me dogging on teachers or the school systems. Oh, I'll do that for you. Uh, <laughs> are you allowed to? Like, yeah, I just school, did. <laughs> like, as a school, like, shouldn't you, aren't you supposed to be like the school system? Or I'm like, going to, no, oh, good heavens, no. My three kids are homeschooled. Okay, so, okay, I, so I, you're, it, you're. Oh, no, I'm about, I'm, I'm, you're, about, I'm about to give you an out. I'm about to give you an out right now. You were afraid of saying the wrong thing. Well, let me tell you what happens to me almost every week. Someone tells me, are you ready for a little bit of edgy? I feel like I know where this is going. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, very good. Well, you can edit it out if you want to. <laughs> About, I mean, this, this happens very regularly. People will ask me, Mike, your kids are high performers. Your kids are very happy. They're the nicest kids I've ever met. They have a plan. They have a path. They're fun to talk to. I don't know that I can have a conversation with a 19-year-old boy except your son. When are you going to f*** with it? And the answer is never. I'm not going to. I'm not going to sell out my kids for what the system says is the right way to do. I'm not going to have them not be raised in the fear and admonition of the Lord. I'm not going to have them be 23-hour Christians, but one hour, don't you dare name the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to do that. And the fact that there is a system of education where Jesus' name is not allowed, is damnable. Absolutely damnable. And so I understand the Christian that cannot have their kid in public school. Or it has to. They cannot homeschool. I get that. But like two-income households where you could be sacrificing, you could just skip the trip to Disney World. If you just homeschooled your kids, you're an open rebellion. Yeah, You're well. an open rebellion. You are choosing to give your kids to the Romans, <laughs> and then they come back Romans. You give your kids to Caesar and they come back Romans. Well, you can't be surprised. And- That's exactly right. So the, so those who have to have their kids in public schools, I have nothing but sympathy. <sighs> However, a whole lot of Christians sold out. A whole lot of Christians could have done the right thing and chose not to. I mean, I during COVID, I mean, that was great. I mean, yep. that sounds terrible. I know. But like I got to. It's as if all things work together for the glory I of God. Loved, the good of those who loved. I loved. I loved. <laughs> I, I, I loved the time and quality time that I got with my family. I, like, I prayed for that stuff all the time, and I didn't ever get that really in life. And um, so when that all of a sudden happened, I just getting her all the time, schooling, all, like that was great for me. Um, and, and it's true. Like my daughter's already told me, like there'll be a section where they're learning about in history, like this, this period, this religion. And there was this section about Christians, and like the teacher just skipped it. And she's she's aware she's she's like, you know, she's my daughter. So she's not like but she she asked us like, so why would you skip it? You know, like, well, there wasn't much there, blah, blah, blah. Like just she's very aware. So, you know, Joe, if I can, um, sadly, I'm running out of time. But, you know, so 
I was myself an academic in political science and political philosophy. Uh, I taught university for 19 years. And see, I didn't know that. We, we didn't... don't know our history at all. I challenge all of your listeners right now to go to the state of Illinois Constitution and look at the preamble. I challenge everybody listening or watching this to go to the state of Illinois Constitution, ILGA.gov. Go look at what the preamble says. And what are we going to find? You're going to find reference to Almighty God and his, <laughs> and, and his blessings. <laughs> Well, and good. That you, made me happy. I was scared. You oh, no, 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 no. Actually, quite the contrary. And that was 1970. <laughs> okay, so what is it? 54 years. I deliver mail. I don't count. 54 <laughs> years ago, we were acknowledging Almighty God. Do you know that the Hawaiian kingdom officially recognized the Christian faith and said only the Christian faith will rule these islands? If you look at nine of the 13 original colonies had established Christian, Christian churches this is a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. That is our heritage. The Northwest Ordinance that set up public education, religion, oh gosh, uh, religion and morality being necessary to the, religion, knowledge, and morality being necessary to the welfare of, of a nation, public school shall be encouraged. We have, a, we have a heritage that is very real, and we're not teaching it. But these are very easily accessed documents. Go look up the Northwest Ordinance. Go look up the uh, state constitutions. Look up the state constitution of Illinois. Look up the state constitution of Massachusetts. Our founding in this country was a holy one. And the sins that we had, which were very real, were also universal sins. This was not the only country with racism. This was not the only country with slavery. In fact, slavery is still a worldwide institution, including yep. sex trafficking right now. Especially All sex the things traffic. wrong about our country at the founding were wrong everywhere. But what was right about our country was unique to us. And I, you know what? I'm, I, uh, I say... I'll say it, man. I'm, I'll say it. I'll say it. I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to be an American. No, you know what? Copyrights oh, can't sing I'll, the whole song. I'll tell you, I'm I, I I'm not. Uh, well, I'm I know not. you're saying. I know I'm not. you're we saying. We lost something. We we, we are we we are yeah. the like the prodigal. Well, son, right? okay, so maybe maybe you can say I'm not proud to be, but there's still a form of patriot. I can hear this patriotism coming out of you still. So you might say I'm not proud to be American because of what's going on and what we've lost, but I can still hear patriotism coming out of God. All of that, but I hear this patriotism coming out too. Am I wrong? Because I feel like I'm hearing it. Am I right? Because I feel like I, um, I am. I am not a patriot. Well, um, I believe the United States right wrong. now is doing more harm than good. I think we have squandered our legacy and our heritage. I believe that we are, have shamefully. Bro, spit you are in ending this like a fire. Yes, I have. <laughs> we have. We have shamelessly spit in the face of the families of those who have fallen for us. The idea that people fought and died for freedom, that we now have campus speech codes, and we are now um, talking about yeah. preferred pronouns. No. You know what? We It is time for America to repent. Uh, so Second Chronicles 714, right? If my people who are called by my, my name will humble themselves and pray, I will, turn, I will look from heaven and turn and heal their land. Christian, it starts with us. I agree. Revival has to start in the house of God. I, I think that there, I feel like I can't say there is a revival happening, but I do see, I do see a lot of Christians right now that are repenting that like yes, where absolutely. I do see a lot of repenting. I see yes. a lot of Christians that are s separating again, that gummy bear Christianity. It's either, yeah. they're either going full, you know, away or they're, or they're going hard. Like I'm basically, I we're, we're getting a divide here. And I think, and, and that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot of people that are really, you said, I, maybe you were made just as time for this. And there's that old adage. I'm probably going to butcher it, but it's like weak times. Uh, help me out here. Yeah, Was yeah, it yeah, strong yeah, men yeah, yeah, make yeah, strong men, men make, make good make times, easy times, yeah. easy times, make weak men, weak men, make hard times, hard times, make strong. Men. And this is the time yes. of strong people. That's exactly coming right. Back. It's time to rise up. Baby. I agree. I think, you know what, but I see it. I see it coming. <laughs> I, I, I see it I coming. Too. I'm an optimist. I think you there's know, a swing back happening. So, you know, like in, in, in the book of Daniel, uh, Daniel has this vision of, <laughs> of the uh of the statue right and a rock yeah, strikes yeah, the feet of the sta mm -hmm. of, of, of the of the statue all the kingdoms of the world mm -hmm. and they blow away like chaff and this rock covers the whole world here's my challenge we pray in the lord's prayer thy kingdom come do we believe it 
Yeah. <laughs> do we believe it? Are we actually asking the Lord, bring your kingdom to earth? And what does that what does that look like? I, I'm taking that hill. I want Marseilles to be yeah. Christian. I want Seneca to be Christian. I want Ottawa to be Christian. I want the public schools to be Christian. I want my kids to take the name of Jesus 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I don't even want to give them leap year off. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I want Christianity to pervade. And any Christian who says they don't want that, yeah, I, I'm not about that noise. I want to say right now, if you're one of those cultural Christians, but I leave it at home, well, why don't you stay home? Because the church doesn't need you. You're not helping. <laughs> <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is Mike Shy, Mike Kanye, my own personal Kanye. And uh, well, t tell people where you, they can find you if they want to follow you, where they can look at what you're doing, politic wise, all of that. Just Facebook, what? You know? Well, I think the best way to follow me is to see what's happening with the city of Marseilles. Yeah, you're pretty active I'm, on the uh, town kind of forum. What uh, see what I'm standing for and what I'm about. <laughs> you know, um, I do preach uh, the last Sunday of every month at the First Congregational Church in Marseilles. Okay, there we go. And I. Uh, I'll, like, I'll preach at Parkview Baptist and uh, a couple of other churches from time to time. I Really, I, I kind of like the mystery of it all. Like Maybe I'll be out speaking somewhere, maybe I won't. But I'll tell you right now, anyone who uh, is listening to this or watching this, my cell phone is 815-58... Give me a call. I'd love to talk to you. All right. Let's... I'm at... It's in White House, uh, green trim. And it's kind of like, yeah, well, what about if you're being doxxed? Whatever. Come at me, bro. Come at me, bro. We're doing this. <laughs> that was so dangerous. Kids, do not give your phone number out <laughs> on the internet. That is not what we encourage. But he's a, an adult, and he can do what adults do. Um, again, thank you so much for coming on here. Thank you for you know just sharing your thoughts. And uh, and I like I like just getting to hear like what you have to say. Again, it's funny that there's a lot that we don't agree on, like when it comes to uh, soteriology and you know, stuff like that. But I love, I love that we always just hang out and get along. And listen, I'm going to tell you something. I told somebody before that I was doing this interview and they're like, oh, how's the podcast going? Oh, I'm, I'm filming. I'm filming episode two tonight, actually. Oh, who's going to be on? And I was like, Michael Scheib. He's the uh, commissioner. They're like, oh, I know him. I know him. He's from he's from Marseilles, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is such a nice he is the nicest guy. And I'm like I'm like, yes, he is. He really is a really nice guy. He's hardcore though. He's a hot, nice guy. I feel like he reminds me of me. Like <laughs> Well, you know, I, I do believe, you know, even even though I, I, I say strong words, yeah. I believe very strongly in leaving everywhere better than I find it. People don't recognize that as love, bro. And I do. I see what you're doing. I know what you believe. And so I see the way that you say, it. and if you don't say the things that you say, then I don't believe you really love me. Because if you really believe the things that I know you say you believe, then you have to talk to me like that. And not everyone's at different, you know, everyone's at different levels of faith. And I know where you're at, man. And so I know that this is you loving. This is how you're loving. This is love to you. And but I know a lot of people don't see that, man. I know that struggle. I, I know that struggle. You know, well, so <laughs> we be burning people with our blazing fires. Well, you know what? But that's uh, that that's that's OK. That's OK. I would much rather insult somebody in love than neglect them in kindness. Man, I want the same. I want I'd rather be. What is that? Kissed with uh, slapped with the truth than kissed with a lie. All of that. Absolutely I want so. I, all of that, man. I would rather live in an authentic uh, relationship, even if it's not my happiness or all of that because i'm because you're right god is sufficient jesus is sufficient the gospel is sufficient and i don't really need all of now we're gonna have to do an episode where we fight over soteriology i feel never like. yes done and done my friend well you know so so you know and, and uh, i realized i was biting my tongue when you, know you what, were no, saying i realize I, I, I have to i have to be somewhere yeah, else you like gotta now go. immediately but, but let me tell you this you know i think we can agree on this the reason why we evangelize is because is because king jesus Jesus told us to, mm. you know, whether it makes a difference or, or simply you were appointed to eternal life and therefore you're believing. Both of us say, go and make disciples of all nations. Yeah, man. And so I tell the Arminian, go and make disciples of all nations. I tell the Calvinist, go and make disciples of all nations. I'm, I think I'm a provisionalist. Yeah. Did you, you know, see that I, debate? I that did, was terrible. I, you know, you got to go. You got to go. Because I want to do that Calvinist, that Calvinist provisional debate. Like, I did not like how they treated each other. But we won't, we'll get into that. I don't know if you saw it. It was like, yeah. they, they were not responsible. They, the was body that, language was, that, was, that, was, was that, too... Uh, was, was that James White? It was, and, uh, yeah. Oh Dr. Leighton Flowers? Yes, Leighton yes, Flowers. Yes, I, a Best name ever. I didn't, okay. like, I, didn't like, I didn't like the eye rolling and stuff like that, <laughs> but I... But, but I... 
But I do like the passion. You know what? I do and like the passion. We'll bring it to Marcel's, yeah. baby. You know what? I, how, how, how come Jim and Layton get all the fun? Like, we're, we're, we're doing this here. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's sign Ladies off Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much. Uh, we're ending it. I should have had a timer again. I told you guys I would last time, and I am working on being a man of my word because I did not bring a timer. But other than that, Thank you, guys. The best way that you can help out is by liking or sharing this. Uh, I'm not asking for your money or anything like that. I think the best thing you can do is share. And I know that the economy is hard because I live in it with you. So we're, we're doing the best we can here, um, doing it, g getting it out there. Share this. Like I said, that's really the best thing you can do. Invite your friends to like our Facebook or Instagram. Uh, you can go to msminc.com. Uh, Mustard Seed Ministries, Inc. is you know, msminc Inc. Inc. with a K. So, uh, yep. And that's it. Other than that, uh, I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you again, Mike, for coming on here. And my anxiety is gone. There was nothing too crazy. It, but, it, but I was just getting warmed up right at the end. I was just getting... I know. We're, we're, do, we're doing we're, this we again, gotta, we gotta, no, no, It's episode two. We have to give him a teaser. You know, it's like, hey, you want to see more of this? Then uh, why don't you contact MSM Inc., you know, and uh, like and share. You know, maybe you'll see more of this. Perfect. All right, man. I'll see you guys. You guys have a great one. Adios. Love God, love your neighbor. Change the world, baby. Jesus is king. <laughs> yes, he is.